Big things have small beginnings. Hey guys, it's the Everyday Aficionados, and today we are reviewing Prometheus. Prometheus is, of course, the second movie in the Aliens franchise, which was directed by Ridley Scott. We're going to give a 60-second synopsis, give and because it's Miguel's movie, Miguel's got to be the one giving the 60-second synopsis. Are you ready, Miguel? I'm ready. Okay, go. Okay, so old dude funds this expedition um, because these scientists found cave paintings, and the cave paintings uh, that the cavemen made had, like, little dots that were like this constellation, so they think this constellation is kind of important, so he funds this expedition. They go there with these scientists, and one of them is a robot, and they go there, and they find that all the... The creatures who they thought might be human ancestors are actually all dead, but they do find this black goo stuff, and the black goo stuff turns, like, everything into monsters, and they all die, and they all get killed, except the one woman and the robot who survive, um, and then they steal one of the alien ships to go uh, to the other, to the alien's home planet to see why exactly they made the black goo stuff, uh, that actually just seems kind of terrible, and why they want to kill humanity, because it seemed like they were going to send this Black Goose stuff there. Um, yeah. Time. I did it! A lot of Black Goo. Um, a lot of cavemen. Cavemen, Black Goo. <laughs> you know, you can tell it's a high-class movie. Absolutely. And you got Black Goo and cavemen. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, it's, I mean, I guess my 60 seconds enough just doesn't do the movie justice, because there's a lot more nuance to it than that, but still, I think we got... The yeah. basic plot beats yeah. all down. We'll get into it a little bit more once we start discussing it. My biggest highlight is just the questions that this film created. Yeah, it just questions why people are here, why they were created. As you know, if you've seen the movie, the black ooze, that is what humans came from. And like you said, this black ooze is creating these like scary, like, creatures like these worms that attack that guy but we came from that same black ooze are we these scary creatures these killing machines these weapons is that why the engineers wanted to destroy us what happened to the engineers they come to this planet they go into like their facility and they find all these bodies and all these engineers that are dead did they kill themselves over whether or not to destroy humans or was it their own creations that ended up being their own demise? People who are taking this movie as an alien prequel that's going to, oh, this movie's going to explain everything that happened in Alien, don't expect that. Because this movie is going to raise more questions than it answers. Actually, one of my highlights of the movie is the character of David. He's so complicated. David isn't so much creepy as he is almost more human than any of the other characters. Exactly. He has this sense of curiosity where he's like looking through people's dreams and their pasts. He masters all these skills that aren't necessarily useful at all. He just seems to exemplify all these kind of interesting, quirky, beautiful human traits that we all love. And yet he's a robot. And his motivations are also really vague as well. Like when he dips the, a little bit of the black goo into one of the scientists who discovered the cave paintings, into his drink. Why does he do that? Exactly. Does he know it's going to be bad? And does he know it's going to affect this guy and make him this horrible creature? Or is he just curious to see what's going to happen? Or is he doing it because someone else wants him to? In one of the most important scenes of the movie, when he speaks, because he's the only one who can speak the language, what does he say to this engineer when he speaks to exactly. him? Exactly. That the engineer sort of caresses his face and then rips his head off and kills everyone else in the room. Maybe David told him about humanity and how horrible it had become. Maybe David felt betrayed by his creators. Another highlight for this film is definitely its visual appeal. A few things in particular would be just like the uh, inside of the engineer ship. The planet itself looks like the terrain looks really nice. When the dust storm comes, that's really cool. Some other special effects to note would be like the C-section scene. That was done so well, almost too well, to the point where you just like don't want to watch it. All the aliens look cool, the engineers look cool, the octopus thing looks cool, the alien from Alien at the end looks really cool, those worms look cool. When you get inside like the caves, it's really creepy and like dark and like spooky and drippy and gross and the bodies all over the place. It's really visually appealing. 
it's really a movie that's just trying to get you to think about what life really means. And to me, that's what makes the idea of extraterrestrials in film so compelling. To me, the biggest low light is definitely just the acting and the characters. A lot of the characters in this film are just like these throwaway, kind of like generic, cliche characters that are almost just there for the horror movie aspect, the body count. They're just there to be killed off. And you have no interest in them. You don't care that they die. In fact, you're almost just like, kill this guy off. He's so annoying. Get him out of the film. They all feel like they were put there for a specific purpose, and that's it. Like you had the geologist who was there to map out the caves and make sure that they could know where to go and when things are coming after them. And the same geologist couldn't find his way out of the cave, but that's another story. When you have a large cast, I mean, what you really want to see is how do they all interact with each other. But really, the movie just segregates all of them and then kills them off. They never get a chance to interact with one another. And the biggest disappointment to me was uh, the leading guy, the one that plays the girl's boyfriend. There was nothing interesting about him. You didn't care that he had the black goo in him. I don't even think the strong woman character was that compelling either. She was no Ripley, that's for sure. Something else I didn't really like is kind of the structure of the film. It starts off with the engineer sacrificing himself to seed life onto a planet. And then it's the cave paintings, and then they're in space, and then they're on the planet, and then they're in the cave, and then they're back on the ship. It's just too all over the place. It just doesn't work. I would much rather have a more intimate portrait of fewer locations. And the fact that cave paintings were enough to fund a trillion dollar space odyssey to this galaxy. My least favorite part of this film, I think I'm just going to go with the dumb characters. Some of the things that they do are just, you don't understand why this character, what's their motivation? Like, they get into this cave, they're like, oh, this atmosphere is breathable. These are supposed to be, like, these scientists, people that are qualified to be coming on this space trip, and then they, they just take their helmets off because it's breathable. Oh, here's this really scary worm. Let me get up really close to it and grab it and touch it and let it attack me. I'm infertile. I'm really depressed about my infertility. What can we do to make things better? Oh, let's... Make love. For me, my least favorite part has got to be just the fact that it kind of ends on that cliffhanger, you know? Like I said, I appreciated the serious ideas the film was dealing with, and I feel like ending on that cliffhanger was a little bit of a cop-out. I don't want it to give us a definitive answer. That's not the point. But I want it to feel like a rounded whole. I feel like it's leaving things open for another movie to answer the questions or whatever it just didn't feel like a satisfying ending why end there even if the fact that the woman goes away on the ship maybe they could have just taken that away maybe they all just die on this planet even that would have satisfied me more than what had happened i don't know prometheus i think is a really good movie especially in the genre of science fiction where you got a lot of movies that are just kind of stupid honestly and just use science fiction as a way to show cool things to sort of excite the audience and whatever prometheus dares to ask questions that aren't so easy to answer and that it itself can never answer it's a film that makes you think in ways that you're not mm -hmm. used to thinking i really love ridley scott's work i can't wait to see what he does next with it i agree it's a really good science fiction film i like it because it's a thinking man's film i think this is one of those films that as time goes on People will like look back at it and think maybe, oh, wow, this film was actually pretty decent. It is one of those movies that was a little lost in its time. I don't know why, but it just seems like most people didn't really appreciate what it was trying to do. It's definitely one of my favorite modern-day science fiction films. So we're giving this movie three Black Goose Bills out of five. Goo! We love our Black Goo. But, like we said, had a lot of missteps, and despite the fact that it brought up ideas that were pretty innovative and we didn't expect going into it, its storytelling really wasn't up to par, especially with the original Alien. But, despite that, we really enjoyed it. This is the Everyday Aficionados, signing off.
God, we're in hell. <laughs> <laughs>